The Manchester Madonna is an Italian Renaissance painting in the National Gallery, London. It is an image of the Madonna and Christ Child with John the Baptist, accompanied by four angels, painted in tempera on a wooden panel. It is 104.5 centimetres high by 77 centimetres wide. The painting is unfinished, with some sections blocked in in underpainting and other sections just lightly drawn onto the white ground layer. Both the author of the work and its date are unknown. It is generally attributed to the great sculptor and painter Michelangelo and is thought to be an early work, perhaps dating from about 1494, when he was aged about 19. The painting is called the Manchester Madonna because in 1857 it was exhibited in the Great Manchester Art Exhibition. It was purchased by the National Gallery London in 1870. The National Gallery owns another unfinished painting one of the Deposition of Christ, which is almost certainly a work by Michelangelo. But I don't believe that the Manchester Madonna is by Michelangelo. I think it's by an entirely different author. Why is the Manchester Madonna not by Michelangelo? For comparison, one must look at all areas of Michelangelo's work, but particularly the Doni Tondo, the Madonna of the Stairs, a carving in shallow relief, the two stone tondi, two round carved works, the Vatican Pieta, the two freestanding Madonna and Child statues, which are in Bruges and Florence, and the Manchester Madonna's long-time companion piece, the London Deposition. The Sistine Chapel frescoes and other sculptures by Michelangelo are also relevant. The Manchester Madonna is a devotional image in tempera, its subject, style and medium being consistent with it having been painted in 15th century Florence, where Verrocchio Filippo Lippi and Botticelli all produced images of the same subject, the Holy Virgin and Christ Child, attended by angels. The work appears to be from the hand of an accomplished master, and the style of painting is highly sculptural, which is the reason for its traditional attribution to Michelangelo. Yet the subject matter has elements almost completely foreign to Michelangelo's work. The strongly symmetrical, closely grouped composition is as tightly packed with figures as some of Botticelli's tondi. It is very different from the compositions employed by Michelangelo. He tends to contrast closed groups with figures set in space. The creation of Adam, the flood, and the Doni Tondo all have these elements. While Michelangelo employed several symmetrical compositions on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, for example, the panel of the downfall and the expulsion, it is typical that the arrangement of the figures is not one of harmony, but of tension. This is also a marked feature of the London deposition in which the two figures bearing the body of the dead Christ strain to support the weight. Another major feature of the Manchester Madonna, which is entirely unlike Michelangelo's work, is the shallowness of the composition. Each figure presents almost as a series of planes and the work in total looks like a shallow relief. Michelangelo left several reliefs, but none of them are like this. His works are marked by the three-dimensionality of the figures. The Doni Tondo, with its strange spiralling composition, is, in the two-dimensional medium of paint, typical of the forms that he usually employed in three-dimensional marble. The sculptured deposition 
in the Accademia in Florence is discounted as Michelangelo's work by most art historians on the grounds that its frontal contour is lacking in depth. There are superficial similarities of the Manchester Madonna to the Madonna Tadai relief in London and to the Madonna Pitti in Florence, as well as the statue of the Bruges Madonna, but the comparison of the painting with the two reliefs reveals that in both the reliefs the Virgin is seated at an angle to the surface plane, while in the painting she sits with her shoulders parallel to the picture plane, and although one knee is forward, it does not create a dynamic sense of depth. In Michelangelo's Madonna Tadai, the child leaps forward with one knee jutting daringly straight out of the picture plane. Michelangelo's Bruges Madonna is a supreme work of art from any angle, but it appears to have been designed to be viewed frontally, as devotional images usually are. The frontal position of the Virgin is given depth by placing the child within the space between her knees. Thus her form contains a space within it that is clearly sculpturally defined. Likewise in the Manchester Madonna, the Christ child is between his mother's knees, but the sense of space is entirely lacking. The pose of John the Baptist in the Manchester Madonna is very similar to that of the Christ child in the Bruges Madonna. However, its effect is very different. Michelangelo's child leans both sideways and backwards. His hand, clasping his mother's, continues the rotation of his body into a spiral, which commences at the bottom of the sculpture in the robe behind the Virgin's left-facing foot, passes through the child and her arm and robe to her face, then descends through the robe to sweep around the back of the body, culminating at the face of the Christ child. By contrast, the movements set up within the structure of the Virgin, Christ Child and John in the Manchester Madonna pass in a series of diagonals parallel to the picture plane, it may seem inappropriate to compare in this way a painting to an object with an integrally three-dimensional form until one looks at the painting undisputably by Michelangelo's hand, the Doni Tondo. The composition of this work is quite extraordinary. The Christ child, of central importance to the subject matter, is placed with his head looking downwards from the very top of the painting. The two adults are strangely placed, one behind the other, with the heads almost in line. The Virgin's knees have between them a book, placed so that it defines the depth of the space. The moment represented is that of Joseph passing the child to his mother, perhaps so that he might be fed. She reaches upward and backward over her shoulder in order to take him. An insignificant moment is frozen in time in an incredibly dynamic composition. The personal interaction that is taking place between the figures is completely overwhelmed by the power of the interaction of the painted forms. The Manchester Madonna, on the other hand, has much the quality of a frieze. The figures are neatly grouped with all the heads lined up in two rows the upper row at a respectable distance from the top of the painting, and the second row with their chins just above the centre line. This sort of arrangement is much too orderly for Michelangelo. In the rare cases on the Sistine Chapel ceiling, where people of similar height meet on the same level, the drunkenness of Noah, for example, then Michelangelo places a spatial depth between the figures that makes the juxtaposition dynamic. Part of the frieze-like quality of the Manchester Madonna comes from the framing of the central figures with cherubim. These take the form of prepubescent boys of about 12 or 13 years, the youngest age at which boys would normally enter the workshop of a master painter. They are lads like those depicted by Botticelli in the Madonna of the Magnificat and other such works. They are not consistent with the young males painted by Michelangelo on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, the so-called nudi, which form a major part of the decorative scheme as supporting figures to the central biblical narratives, are not boys. 
They are fully developed and very muscular young men, such as might be found in the marble quarries. When Michelangelo adds children to the background of his painted figures of prophets and sibyls, they are broad, thick-chested urchins, quite unlike the two painted and the two merely blocked in in the Manchester Madonna. Likewise, the small figure of the cherub with a candlestick which Michelangelo carved for the Arca of St Dominic in Bologna is a robust fellow. In Michelangelo's long career, he only made this one cherub the product of his youth. Thereafter, he never painted or sculpted another winged figure. The mighty angel who attends God Almighty in the creation of Adam and all the little putty who ornament the architectonic surrounds of the prophets and sibyls on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel are quite wingless. It is probable that he was fully aware that angels, as described in the Bible, do not have wings. The winged beings are cherubim. Michelangelo was clearly, not by choice, a painter or sculptor of wings. Yet the right-hand figure in the Manchester Madonna has them growing out of his shoulders. It is quite clear that this painting has been done by someone who favoured wings and who chose to indicate their presence even where there was not room to include them in the composition. Michelangelo chose to paint young men, not cherubim. His background figures in the Doni Tondo were apparently not angels either. It is thought that they represent the pagan classical world before the coming of the Christ child, and that the small figure of St John, placed at the boundary between the youths and the Holy Family, is the intermediary between the two, having the role of the announcing of the coming. John's position in Michelangelo's Doni Tondo is unusual. The common practice was to paint John as part of the Holy Family group, either adoring the Christ, signing his presence to the viewer, or else presenting the child with some object of significance, a cross or a goldfinch with its red blood-stained head. In the Manchester Madonna, John takes his usual position with the Virgin and Christ child. He alone looks at the viewer. His arms are crossed in an attitude of devotion, his right hand making the sign of benediction, his left hand gesturing toward the Christ. The significance of the placement and gestures of the hands in paintings of medieval and Renaissance period was highly important. To this day, gesture remains of greater significance among speakers of Italian than speakers of English, but in the art of the 15th century Florence, it constituted a whole language. It was one of which Michelangelo must have been fully aware, but unlike Leonardo, who used it repeatedly, Michelangelo did not adopt this language as a general rule. Neither did he adopt the motive of a lesser person within the scene engaging the viewer with a direct gaze, as John the Baptist does in this painting, and as the angel Uriel does in Leonardo's Louvre Virgin of the Rocks. Among the hundreds of figures that adorn the Sistine Chapel, no significant figure, and very few lesser ones, look outwards, and when they do, they stare past us in a state of anxiety or absorption. It must be acknowledged here that Michelangelo's work was not entirely without symbolic gesture. He created the gesture of creation itself, an image so powerful as to thrill the minds of countless thousands and be adopted and adapted over and over in visual art from the most elevated to the most profane. But in general, Michelangelo does not deal in symbolic gestures. He deals in action and repose. The reaching of the hands of God Almighty and Adam are the crucial meeting point of action and repose in Michelangelo's art. This has nothing to do with the easily read symbolic gesture employed by the painter of the Manchester Madonna. When one looks at the small details, there are further indications that this is not Michelangelo's work. The Manchester Madonna is by an artist who puts fancy edges on the draperies. 
multiple little folds and ornaments. Michelangelo's draperies are not entirely without ornament. In the Pieta, the decorative folds of the Virgin's neck, the deep fold over her forehead, the knot of the Christ's loincloth, and the few varying and deeply three-dimensional folds at the hem of the Virgin's robe make wonderful contrast with the broad, deeply sculptured drapery. In the Manchester Madonna, the treatment of the Virgin's cloak is also broad, but at every other edge there is a multitude of little complex folds and wrinkles which are very decorative of themselves, but unlike those employed by Michelangelo, are of no great compositional significance. The shapeless piece of cloth that is wrapped around the Christ child seems to have neither form nor purpose as a garment. The little bit of bare bottom showing and the tummy of John the Baptist can only be described as cute. This type of cuteness is totally foreign to Michelangelo. He prefers to leave his baby boys naked. The large, gaping hole in the bodice of the mother's dress is even more curious. Other Renaissance paintings reveal that the dresses of nursing mothers had long slits concealed between the vertical folds that fell from the neckband as through which the child could be fed. Such vertical folds can be seen on the dresses worn by the Madonna of Bruges, the Madonna Tadai, the Madonna Pitti and the Madonna Doni. But a great hole in the dress through which the breast permanently protrudes like that of the Manchester Madonna seems highly impractical and quite unlikely on a dress that is also equipped with nicely fitted sleeves and rows of little buttons at the wrist. It is to be presumed that the artist wished to emphasise the significance of the breast, perhaps in allusion to the passage, Yea, and a sword shall pierce thy breast also. Whatever the significance, Michelangelo was in general more literal in his depiction of clothing. Moreover, Mary's breast is totally unlike any female breast that Michelangelo painted or sculptured. Michelangelo's breasts always have the appearance of afterthoughts stuck on an otherwise masculine chest. This Mary's breast has been painted by someone who knew what a small, youthful breast, heavy with milk, looked like. If this painting is indeed the work of a great master, the equivalent of a young Michelangelo, what are the qualities that make it special? Firstly, its almost but not quite symmetrical composition is very pleasing. The stately young Virgin Mary sits like a queen upon her rocky throne with indulgent serenity. The pairing of the youthful cherubim with their heads turned towards each other forms a contrast to the Christ child and John, also closely paired but turning outward one toward the word of God, of which he is now the earthly incarnation, and John towards the viewer, as he shares the precious significance of knowing that this is the one for whom he will be the last prophet. The two figures on the left have the delightful familiarity of good friends. The scroll they study contrasts with the book held by Mary, probably representing the Old and the New Testaments. The intimacy of the young mother and her toddling baby is also delightful. Little Jesus attempts to climb the folds of his mother's cloak, pulled taut against his weight because she is sitting on it. As he reaches out, Mary, somewhat distracted, automatically moves her book aside from the baby, but her mind is on her reading. She is not concentrating on the child or looking at him. The gesture is a very natural one, Every parent who has tried to read with a baby around can recognise her state of mind. The interactions that take place in the work of Michelangelo rarely give us this sort of awareness. He was not good at depicting the realities of intimate family relationships. The Manchester Madonna has altogether a more gentle quality than the Doni Tondo and this is partly because of the quality of the light which streams in from the left side of the painting, modelling the limbs and drapery and touching the face of the Christ child, but leaving the features of John in the shadow. The other reason that this painting is gentler is that the forms themselves are less strident. The bodies of the children and the limbs of the boys are less muscular, softer and smoother 
than those painted by Michelangelo. Who then is the author of this remarkable and beautiful work? It has been suggested that either Michelangelo did it in his youth or that one of his students did it, but no student has come forward and put up his hand as a potential author, so it remains unconvincingly attributed to Michelangelo. The work has none of the mannerist qualities that one would expect of a follower of Michelangelo who had seen the Sistine Chapel ceiling or the Doni Tondo. The other option is to look backwards in time to a generation earlier than Michelangelo. Immediately one perceives something of the stylized grace of Botticelli, but this is not Botticelli. Before Botticelli there was Verrocchio and Ghirlandaio, the formalized qualities of the work look increasingly familiar. The composition with its orderly, tightly packed space and the particular subject matter announce themselves as being from no later than the mid-1400s. It is contemporary with works by Fra Angelico and Fra Filippo Lippi. The peers of the four youths in this painting may be seen robed in blue with musical instruments in Piero della Francesca's adoration, attending the baptism of Jesus by the same artist, riding in the panoply of the three kings in Bonozzo Gozzoli's fresco for the Medici, and singing in four-part harmony on Luca della Robbia's Cantoria. The Manchester Madonna is a work of great quality. It does not present as the work of a lesser painter, particularly when viewed from the perspective of early or mid-15th century, 1420 to 1460. Having searched backward for that person, one individual leaps forward as the potential painter. This is an artist who, according to Vasari, painted, but for whom no painted work exists. An artist undeniably great and with all the skills of composition and characterization to create the tender scene of the clambering baby and the distracted mother. The Manchester Madonna was not painted by Michelangelo. It was not even painted within his lifetime. But art historians are right in recognising its sculptural qualities. It is indeed the work of a famous sculptor, the man of whom Michelangelo was in many ways the heir apparent. The Manchester Madonna is the work of Donatello. Why is the Manchester Madonna the work of Donatello. The evidence for this is all there within the work itself. This painting, with the sculptural quality of a frieze, is the work of the man who was the master of the art of low relief. The work in marble that comes immediately to mind is the giving of the keys in London with the row of heads of the apostles. There are also strong similarities to be found in the Prato pulpit and Donatello's Cantoria. Throughout Donatello's bronze reliefs, elements may be found similar to those in this painting, but the strongest evidence comes from a comparison of the individual figures within the painting with some of Donatello's greatest and best-known statues. The bronze David in the Bargello is a youth of the same age as the angels in the Manchester Madonna. His face, his stance and his boyish body are replicated in these youths. The shapes of his limbs, notably the forearms, wrists and hands, are the same and they are nothing like those painted or sculpted by Michelangelo. Donatello's David was the first life-sized bronze to have been created since ancient times. Donatello was familiar with the remains of classical statues. He seems to have deliberately based his young Jewish hero on ancient models, hence the nudity. 
In terms of the narrative, it may be explained by the fact that the king placed his own armour upon David, but it was too heavy. This hardly explains what he's done with his own clothes. Donatello was setting a new trend in depicting heroes naked. For purposes of comparison, this allows us to see the young man's posture in detail. The weight placed entirely on one foot, the other leg suspended loosely, the back swaying backward and the belly falling forward, the shoulders sloping. This is the posture that Donatello uses for David and for the sculptures of Zechariah and Haggai. It is quite different to the tense, ready-for-action posture of Michelangelo's David. The form of the right-hand youth with the scroll in the Manchester Madonna is almost exactly like that of Donatello's David, seen from the side. An immediate similarity can be seen between the face of David and all three completed faces of the older figures in the painting. David's profile, the line of the nose, the small mouth, the angle and set of the eyes are almost identical to those of the right-hand youth. The face of the second youth is the same shape as David's, although the nose is broader and the mouth different. The facial features of this figure may be seen sculptured on the head of the young John the Baptist from the Duomo, Florence. When the head of David is compared in three-quarter view with the face of the Madonna, then the similarities are striking. The shape of the wide jaw, the planes of the cheek, the proportion of the features within the face, the shape of the nose, mouth and eyelids are all so remarkably alike as to indicate that they are the creation of the same artist. One of the characteristics of the youthful angels in the Manchester Madonna is the way in which they are paired and interact with each other. They share their scrolls, they lean on each other's shoulders, their arms overlap. This motive of the paired youths with arms around each other's shoulders is echoed again and again as background observers in Donatello's bronze reliefs, such as those at the Basilica of St Anthony in Padua and the Herod scene in the Siena Baptistry. Similar paired but less intimate figures with books and scrolls appear on the doors of the sacristy at San Lorenzo, Florence. The figures of the infant Jesus and John the Baptist are straight from the pulpits of Padua and Prato. They also have counterparts on the Cantoria Gallery that Donatello created for Florence Cathedral, now in the Museo dell'Opera del Duomo, companion piece to the more famous Della Robbia Cantoria Gallery. The stance of John the Baptist and his little round face appear in many figures, likewise the profile of the Christ child. The proportion of their bodies, limbs, feet, faces, all appear over and over again. Moreover, the dancing babies of the Cantoria wear similar garments to the Christ child and to the youthful angels. This includes the particular way that the garment divides to reveal the thigh, characteristic of the Manchester Madonna. Another similarity in these draperies on the Cantoria is that they have distinctive folds along the edges which are small and have complex and highly particular combinations of triangular and rounded forms. These fanciful little edges have almost exact counterparts in the robes of the Manchester Madonna. The major three-dimensional sculptural work, apart from David, that has a direct link to the Manchester Madonna is the Atus Amor. He is the model for the holy children. In profile, he resembles the Christ child. In full face, he is John the Baptist. The similarity of the shape of the body and limbs is as similar to the two children as David is to the angelic youths. But there is another important feature of this figure which confirms the authorship of the work. The wings that spring from the shoulder of Attis Amor do so in a manner that is identical to those that can be seen springing from the shoulders of the angel to the furthest right of the Manchester Madonna. As for the Virgin Mary, her face and downcast eyes are those of the bronze David. We see her in the Annunciation of Santa Croce in Florence 
and in several small works attributed to Donatello's workshop. Her headdress, signifying a prophetic character, is present in the regal Mother of God figure in bronze in the Basilica of St Anthony of Padua. The drapery of the robes across her knees echoes in paint the drapery of Donatello's John the Evangelist for Florence Cathedral, now in the Duomo Museo. Several works, including the bronze deposition, show a female figure with a garment open to reveal a breast in a similar manner to that of the Virgin Mary. And while one might expect this figure to have little in common with the St George of Or San Michele, now in the Bargello, the cloak that each wears tied on the right shoulder have exactly the same knot. On examination and comparison, almost every work by Donatello both bronze and marble, sculptured in the round or in relief, has some aspect that relates directly to the Manchester Madonna. The subject and style are both consistent with the date in the early 1400s, not the late Renaissance or the early Mannerist period. The existence of the Manchester Madonna confirms what Vasari wrote, that Donatello was a painter as well as a sculptor. This is probably the only example of his painting that remains. Because of its unique nature, it has been hard to attribute, leading to the mid-19th century conclusion that it must have been painted early in the working life of the great sculptor Michelangelo. In the case of Michelangelo, it is possible to find some aspects of the Manchester Madonna that relate to his works, but the painting does not feel like that of Michelangelo. The majority of his works are more notable for the way in which they differ rather than for their similarities. While the boys in the Manchester Madonna are the mirror images of Donatello's David, next to them Michelangelo's David and the young men from the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel are beings from another planet. The Manchester Madonna has long been recognised as a work of great significance. But as the solitary painting by the greatest sculptor of the early Renaissance, it is even greater importance than previously recognised, both to the National Gallery and to the wider understanding of the art of the early Renaissance. <laughs>